to Brand New Coffee Table Physics. I'm Riley. And I'm Jonathan. We're two second year physics students. And what we thought would be really cool is if every week we came up with an everyday problem and tried to explain it to you. We much prefer to think of this as more of a chilled conversation over coffee. And perhaps clear up any misconceptions you might have, probably on account of your physics teachers mangling the facts. So, on with the physics. So, the reason you're probably watching us right now is because you wondered, like us, why is the sky blue? And no, it's not a reflection of the sea. Firstly, we should probably explain what we mean by colour. For those of you that haven't just switched off in outrage at such a stupid question as, what is colour? We're going to talk about what is often called the spectrum of light, what you may call a rainbow. Now, light is a wave, not quite like the waves in the sea, but similar. We can think of them as looking a bit like this. Each colour, be it red, blue, green, turquoise, magenta, burnt umber, crushed aloe, sugar violet... Looks a bit different and has a different frequency. This is how squashed together the wave is. Or in more grown-up terms, how many of these peaks are hitting our eye per second? Red has the smallest frequency, meaning it is stretched out. Purple has the largest frequency and so is more squashed together. All of the remaining colours have a different frequency in between these. You should recognise this pattern from rainbows. Now, if you remember back to the last school, you may recall mixing together all the coloured paints, and you probably got a horrible dark brown colour. So black must be what we get when we mix together all the colours, and white must be the absence of colour, right? Wrong. In fact, white light is a mixture of light of many different frequencies. The light we get from the sun is like this. This light travels undisturbed for millions of kilometres until it's almost reached us. However, there is one final barrier between it and us. The atmosphere. We don't want to strain to the realm of chemistry here, but in essence, on Earth we're surrounded by a layer of gases, such as nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, for some strange reason, which is totally irrelevant to answering the question, we can also think of light as being a stream of particles, called photons. Photons corresponding to different colours have different frequencies and different associated energies. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy. Now, we should probably warn some viewers, we're about to drop in a small equation. We promise this is relatively painless and quite easy to understand. So here it is, the Planck-Einstein equation. What this means is that the energy of the photon is proportional to the frequency of the light. If I double the frequency, I double the photon energy. E stands for energy, F for frequency, and H is about 0.33 noughts 7. That's all there is to it. So, back to our photons coming from the sun. After their long journey through space, they now hit our atmosphere. Now you can think of this as like me trying to get through a busy tube station at rush hour. So I try to get through the crowd, I'll almost certainly collide with people and be knocked off course. Photons collide with gas molecules in the atmosphere in exactly the same way and are scattered or knocked off course in a different direction. If this didn't happen, then we would see the sun as a ball of light in a dark sky, as the photons would travel in a straight line from the sun to our eyes. Now it turns out that the greater the energy and the higher the frequency of photon, the more effective the gas molecules are at scattering them. What this means is that blue light is scattered more than, say, red light, and so we see the sky as blue. But hang on. Purple light has the greatest frequency, so surely that is scattered the most. So why isn't the sky purple? Well, the problem is with your eyes. It turns out that the receptors at the back of our eyes, the rods and cones, respond more strongly to blue than they do to purples, and so pick up the blue light and kind of ignore the purple. One last thing. We kind of see the opposite effect when we look at sunsets. When we do this, we end up looking straight towards the setting sun. The red light is less likely to be scattered away from our eyes than the blue light, and so we see the sunset as red. And so, we reach the end. Now, next time you look up, you'll know why the sky is blue. Thanks for joining us. If you have any thoughts on the video, let us know in the comments box. Plus, tell us if there's something about this wonderful world around us that you think, I want to know what's going on here. We would love to help. See you here next week. Same time, same place. Cheerio! Cheerio.